What minor thing that happened to you as a child has stayed with you your whole life? One time when I was small, about 5-6, I was hanging by a gumball machine while my parents were shopping inside a few stores at a mall. I stayed by the gumball machine because it was one of those cool ones that had a glass casing with a Rube Goldberg machine. It would scoop the gumball around and send it down slides with ramps. I still remember it vividly, it was awesome. Well at some point, an old man in a trench coat noticed me and bought a gumball, just to watch my excitement and hear me laugh. He had the biggest smile on his face and pulled out a 10 roll of quarters and told me to go to town. To this day that random act of kindness and generosity has affected me so deeply. It might have been nothing more than a passing thought and an afternoon of enjoyment for him, but honest to god that event might be the cornerstone of my personality. I really expected that to take turn after trench coat. I'm relieved it didn't. When I was 6 or 7, I woke up from an especially vivid dream certain that I could fly. I ran to my dad to tell him and got a dismissive response. I told him I would prove it and persuaded him to follow me out to the driveway. I ran, leapt, but failed to fly. I will never forget the feelings of confusion and disappointment as I watched my dad laugh, turn around and walk away. To this day, 40 years later, I can accurately self-assess my internal well-being based upon whether or not I've been recently taking flight in my dreams. After having such a dream, it seems so silly that you can't fly because you know how it feels to do so. My mom shared my leftover french fries with my sister while I napped. I threw an epic tantrum that my whole family remembers. I was 3 or 4. Understandable. I would probably do the same and I'm 24. My dad promised me pizza in exchange for work. I worked and never got the pizza. I was probably 11 or so and the work wasn't easy I had to load a trailer full of logs. Once when I was like 6 I was at a family friend's house and their kid offered me some gum. I took the gum and put it in my mouth without looking. Big mistake. Turns out she had folded the gum and put a bug inside it. 11 years later and I still refuse to accept gum when people offer it. I know an adult that chews nicotine gum. He will offer it to anyone and everyone without telling them what it is. He offered it to a kid and thought it was hilarious. What a jerk. Fell in a swimming pool around 3 years of age. To my recollection, I almost drowned and it spawned the lifelong phobia of swimming in deep water. According to my dad, the only person that nearly drowned was him, as when he dived in after me, I was floating with my eyes shut and cheeks puffed out, making him laugh underwater. Our first cat, outdoor indoor cat, never came home one day. A couple weeks later, I was talking with one of our neighbors, older couple, 70ish, that lived 15-20 houses down from us. And they were talking about how they found a cat recently and took it in. I was like 8 or 9 at the time and couldn't fully process it. So I didn't bother to ask if it was our cat. And I didn't tell my parents either. We moved to a new house a few weeks later. 40 miles away. Several years later I realized that there was a strong chance that it was our cat. And it eats me up a bit every now and then. At least he lived and found an home. Hopefully your neighbor was a nice owner. When I was about 8 my dad was standing in the kitchen making hot dogs for dinner. He picked up his beer thinking it was the sauce bottle and poured it right on his hot dog. I yelled at him to stop but it was too late. His hot dog was smattered with beer. He put the beer down, looked at the hot dog, looked at me, and then took a ravenous bite out of the hot dog. I died laughing. He was always funny like that. When I was 11 I was making Kraft mac and cheese while my mom was making instant butterscotch pudding. The powder packets were both sitting on the kitchen counter and they were almost identical. She accidentally grabbed the cheese powder, put it into the pudding, and commented on how weird the color was. We both just looked at each other and lost it. I was sitting up against the handball wall in second grade and this kid came up to me and pinched my dong through my overalls for no reason whatsoever. This entire sentence just feels like 1992. I was on a family vacation in Montana. The cabin we were staying in had a lot of board games. One night my dad and I are playing Battleship and I'm losing. My sister starts watching us and notices my dad move one of his ships. She tell him that he isn't allowed to do that. 
I get mad because he is cheating. I'm told that it is just a game and shouldn't take it so seriously. Next time we play I don't even put my ships on the board. My dad figures out pretty quickly and gets mad because I'm cheating and cheating is wrong. I respond it's just a game and he shouldn't take it so seriously. Now I'm being a smart mouth. A day or two later my dad asks if I want to play and I say no because when he cheats it's okay because it is just a game. But when I do it cheating is wrong. Now I'm pouting. This would get brought up from time to time and my parents could never explain how any of that was fair. As I parent, I can't imagine doing this to my kid. An old man saw me struggling to figure out how to drink from a water fountain when I was little. He took the time to explain it to me and show me how he did it. I was so excited to finally be able to do it by myself after that. I still think of him occasionally when I use a water fountain. Going around the yard picking up a whole bunch of petals from different flowers and then taking them to a flat rock to smush them into a purple brown paste that I called a potion. I didn't try it so I never found out if it would have worked. I used to do this with rose petals and then leave them in water for a while. That was 8 Yomi's perfume. My mum had been out training for a half marathon one day and was really tired. She asked me to switch the electric blanket on full for her. It was one of those ones that went off I 2 3 off. I didn't realize this and switched it right through to off again. When I asked her the next day how nice it was to get I to her warm bed she said the electric blanket wasn't on. I was heartbroken. This was 35 years ago and it still makes me sad to think about it. Dude, I'm sad too. I had a banana in my backpack for snack time in elementary school. When I opened up my backpack, my banana was squished and ruined my favorite backpack. Ever since then I made sure to not put a whole banana in my backpack. Me except for I accidentally left a stick of butter in my purse. I love that purse so much. I got grass stains on my clothes at recess. It must have been new jeans or something because I remember feeling bad about it when I told my mom that night. But she shrugged it off and said life happens, the moment, and the idea that sometimes it's worth it to enjoy life and let material things slide, stuck with me ever since. Recently, my husband spilled red wine all over our white sheets, right after I told him to stop setting the glass down next to him on the bed like he always does, and he came out of the bedroom saying, you're going to kill me. I thought of that moment with my mother and told him not to feel bad about it because life happens. In case you ever need it, here's a tip. For wine stains on cotton, try scrubbing with salt and or dipping the stains in a big pot of boiling or simmering water. After dipping in the hot water, you can basically squeeze the wine out. Then put through washing machine as usual. I used a combo of these methods and pretty much got the stains out. He's still a knucklehead for putting a red wine glass on a bed, though. When I was really young, I remember playing with Barbies with my mom. I really enjoyed it and I wanted to do it again, so I always thought about it, but we never did and that distant memory has stayed with me ever since. This is weird but I was roughly about 6, 7, 8. Me and my sister were watching Hey Arnold the cartoon, and it was an episode where, I think, I can't remember the exact details. Arnold had learned karate. A bigger kid walked up to him so he felt threatened and attacked him, I think. He was definitely mean to him, and the other boy ran away in tears shouting that he was only going to ask if Arnold knew the time, or the time the next bus was at. I felt immense guilt at this. I was so so sad. It was empathy towards the larger kid I felt and it hit me so hard I had to leave the living room to go to my bedroom and cry. I have no idea why it made me feel that way or how it affected me like that but it made me feel rotten. For ages I kept thinking about it and it made me upset every time. No one noticed because I didn't make it obvious but I've thought about it so many times through my life but never told anyone about it because it's such a weird and obscure thing to be upset about lol. I know this isn't exactly what you meant for an answer to your question but it was certainly an experience for me. It was just before I started the third grade and I was so excited about all my new supplies. I rarely got anything new. I had labeled all of them myself. I really didn't think they looked that bad. My dad got home from work and my mom in front of me got all distraught about how horrible my handwriting was. It was a full on rant. I was devastated. My dad was silent. 
never defended me. By the time I was in high school I had better penmanship than anyone in my family. But that scene played out over and over again for the next 18 years. Sometimes parents forget how even the smallest thing excite kids. I have too. And I always try to share their excitement over the little things. But sometimes it's hard after a long day at work. Sorry that happened to you. Hope you're okay with your parents. We live in a small village and our doors are always open. Once a homeless man went into our house, climbed the stairs, went into my brother's room, and just fell asleep in my brother's bed. When we found him, my father told him nicely to please leave and nothing more happened. I think about that often and a few weeks ago, when having dinner with my family, mentioned how crazy that was. My family was kind of surprised because as it turns out nothing like that ever happened. I must have completely made up that episode as a kid, never talked about it to anyone, and just remembered it as if it had happened. Now I think about that story even more often. Wow that's wild. I can relate to the last part. I frequently ask hey, remember when? And my family usually doesn't. They claim I have a really good memory but sometimes I wonder if my brain just made them up. I lost my timing in a wave pool and thought I was drowning. A lifeguard yelled at me instead of helping. Now I don't like wave pools. Man wave pools are like the catch 22 of water based entertainment. When you're a kid you're young enough to appreciate the entertainment but too little not to almost drown. When you're an adult you are no longer excited by them but can survive to tell the tale. One weekend I was hanging out with some girls who didn't particularly care to have me around. I had known these girls since kindergarten and it hadn't quite dawned on me that they didn't like me. Towards the end of the weekend they discussed having another sleepover, and when I chimed in saying I couldn't stay over because I had been gone a couple days and needed to get home, the girl who resented me the most looked at me and said no offense Lem, but we weren't inviting you, she said it with the most disgusted and duh don't you get it tone I had ever heard from anyone. Still hurt so much to think about it, and this happened over 7 years ago. To this day I'm always nervous as heck to partake in plans for fear that someone will look at me and do the same thing. No offense Lem but we aren't inviting you, ugh. To this day, my inward default assumption is that people don't like me unless proven otherwise. Thanks for that, horrible preteen school friends. NB, I'll be 40 in 2 weeks that crap sticks. I wanted to play Pac-Man I believe it was a quarter or .50 cents or something. I asked my mom for money, and she had none but this random guy gave me money so I played Pac-Man for the first time on an arcade system thing. It was a pizza place. My dad said I was in butthole once. Now I try very hard to be nice to the people in my life. Except him, can't let him know that worked. My mom told me when I was really young that if I don't stop acting girly I will turn homo and that it's a disease. Not knowing what homo meant I asked if it was curable she replied no and I remember being really bummed and teary about it. About 14 years later, she was right. The real reason why I don't drink. When I was about 4 or 5 years old, my parents had a party, and when it was done, there were a whole bunch of beer bottles around the house. I grabbed one. Drank the little bit of beer in the bottom. Figured beer was pretty good. Went for a second bottle. The third bottle was the one my mother was using for an ashtray. Got a nice big mouthful of cigarette ash and threw up. Now, I can't even touch alcohol without it reminding me of the taste of cigarette ash. And I start gagging. One day at primary school during a period of free time my group of friends all disappeared to go to the bathroom. I stayed behind because well I didn't need to go and also I was reading and quite engrossed in my book too. In the time between them leaving and returning someone put an anonymous love letter in with one of my friends things. When they saw the letter they asked me who did it, and quite honestly I replied I didn't notice because I was reading they decided that it was me who put the note there, despite the fact that my shaky hands couldn't have written that well, and were very mad with me and didn't speak with me for the rest of the day for playing a mean joke. That year was our last year of primary school too and it probably gives me an irrelevant, because it seemed large and kind of is by its impact, story. We had to write up a yearbook profile for ourselves you know, name, hobbies, favorite class and list 5 friends. 
poor lamb that I was I was so stressed about only listing 5 friends because I liked so many people and didn't want anyone to be sad. I worried a lot and even handed the paper in late because of it. No one mentioned my name. When we received a copy of the yearbook I read through every profile and no one mentioned me and it broke my heart. I've always struggled with making friends. Even now as an adult I see myself doing the same thing I come on super strong with a new person and then pull back to practically acquaintance levels because I worry that I've annoyed them. I've never been someone's best friend. And when I think I've found a good friend they do just tend to disappear. I must be a very annoying person. That was a cruel thing to ask of kids. That would have messed me up. My second grade teacher told me I was stupid. In front of the class. For doodling on my spelling test. Because of the doodles. And despite my correct spelling of all the words. She dropped my grade from an A to a C. Little did she know. My mom would take this doodle debacle to a psychiatrist and have me prescribed a long slew of medications for mental and emotional disorders I didn't have. Effectively releasing the beast which is my mother's munchaws and bipoxy which deeply affected both my sisters and myself. Thanks Mrs. R. Smith. I hope you get warts. It does still affect me. Thankfully, she never got to that line of tampering with blood samples and things of that nature. It was all in the realm of mental and behavioral health. She tried to have me diagnosed with rad in third grade. Took me to six different doctors. Put me in countless therapies. I have no 7th grade year on file because I spent late 2009 mid 2011 in inpatient mental hospitals. I knew something was wrong from very early. It seemed like all within a year. My sisters and I got our own medicine cabinet for psych meds. She doctor shopped like a maniac. Constant trips to doctors. One four times a week. I thought I was just insane. Turns out my mom's a nutter. Thanks for all y'all being so nice about it I'm much better now that I'm an adult and don't have to have her in my doctor's appointments. When I was young, probably around 8, I cleaned my room and was super proud. So I showed my mom. At this point, she had undiagnosed mental illnesses. And because I had forgotten to pick up one sock on the floor, she screamed at me until I cried. To this day I still have difficulties cleaning things because it'll never be good enough. Me, my sister and my mom went shopping this one time. Me and my sister specifically went because we wanted to buy these toys. Lem explain why the toy was a big deal. What you got was a powdered substance that you dissolved in hot water and 15 minutes later you will get a Disney character or a Marvel superhero small figurine. It was fucking brilliant and me and my sister really wanted it. Each box of the powder gave one figurine and we both wanted two each. Anyways we get to the toy store and only the Disney character ones were left and Marvel ones were completely sold out. I wanted Marvel. We checked multiple stores but couldn't get that specific toy anywhere. Only that one store sold them. So my sister got to have two of them and me nothing. I was really bummed. Didn't cry or anything but really really sad. Have been waiting to get the toy for a couple of months now. The TV adverts were everywhere. So as we were walking away from the store I was holding my mom's hand and my head was down with disappointment. Right then my mom looks at me. She stood still and looked at me for a second. She then pulls me and we were back at the toy store. Looks at me and says buy whatever you want from here with same price range of that toy. I bought a cool Batman figurine. That day I got to know what loving someone unconditionally really means. She just had to look at me for a second. I wasn't even crying and she understood what I was feeling and what I needed. I was the happiest kid with that Batman figurine and thanked her. I will remember this incident as long as I live. You were so blessed to be so loved. I laid on the arms of a football table. My brother was under it. I tried to get off and it ended up falling on him. I spent a half hour in the corner. I never forgot it. My brother can't because his memory is crap. An older cousin chased me around the yard while holding a cicada. I was a sobbing mess and to this day I have a terrible fear of insects. Justice was served. However, when my sister caught up to her and shoved a cicada down the cousin's pants. My dad put a life cicada in his mouth one day to show me they weren't scary. Yet it didn't help at all. My mother once told me you know I like it when you clean your dresser. I didn't know she liked that. Every time I clean. I make sure to keep the dresser clean. Just because I remember that statement. In so many stories about butthole parents. 
This story is really wholesome and makes me happy. Thanks for sharing. This is weird, but my parents pronounced my name differently and it made me really confused and afraid to say my name. I still hate saying it and avoid it. I'm anxious I'll say it wrong and I often do. I was also afraid that I'd say other people's names wrong so I often avoided using them which still sometimes flares up. For an idea, say my name was Carolyn, usually pronounced Carolyn. Mum would often pronounce it Carolyn or Carolyn and dad would call me Caroline. It's a bit more subtle in real life, so no one really noticed my confusion but you get the idea. I finally came forward and asked my mom about it as an adult and she just confused me more. She claimed her pronouncing it as Carolyn was so people would get it wasn't spelled with a K and then pronounced it differently twice in the same sentence. I guess I just need to pick a version and go with it although it still makes me anxious and my brain starts repeating all the different pronunciations when I think about it. You should chose one, and own it. It's your name, what you are. Don't let other people define who you are. One of my first memories, couldn't have been more than 2-3 years old. I found this huge, beautifully awesome multicolored leaf. I took it inside and while admiring it, I accidentally broke a piece of it off. It was very dry. I paused for a second, got pee as heck and proceeded to shred the leaf into a million pieces. Then I was just sad. It was the best leaf ever. Things like this can really leave a mark on you. Third grade teacher said always wash behind your ears. No idea why maybe basic hygiene class or something. To this day when I shower that memory comes up. Listening to Bohemian Rhapsody with my dad. We sat in the car after we got home to wait for the end of the song. As he said, you always wait for the gong. He's been gone almost 25 years now, but I still remember and wait for the gong. My dad's friend bought me a relatively nice pen for my 7th birthday. In retrospect he probably just didn't know me that well, but at the time I took it as someone believing I was more than just a little kid, and that I had a place in world or amongst the adults when it came to pen related stuff like learning. He doesn't know it, but that pen boosted my confidence 100x over, and on some level, made me feel comfortable in learning environments. I must have been about 5-6 at the time. We were visiting a seaside town, checking shops and walking along the pier. My parents buy me and my very little sister a large fresh cookie each. I have this cookie in my hand, leaning on this huge thick wall overlooking the water. I was getting myself situated, taking a bit whoosh. A freaking seagull swooped down and stole my cookie. Like this cookie was the size of the freaking seagull's head. It was the largest cookie I had ever laid eyes on at this point in my life. I was devastated and cried so freaking hard. My mum tried to comfort me but I think they were both trying not to laugh. I get some of my sister's cookie but it wasn't the same. From that day on I hated all seagulls with a passion and guarded any food from flying attackers. Frick seagulls. I hope you choked on IT. One of those bloody fricking pieces of crap stole my 6 pounds XX burger. Something that has always stuck with me was when I was 3 or 4, and I wanted to go to the bathroom for the first time, at the mall, on my own. Well I went and felt proud of myself, until I realized as I was leaving that I didn't know how goddamn push doors worked. I remember panicking and crying as a 3 year old, thinking the handle was missing and that I was somehow trapped within the bathroom. Then, a nice old man came from behind me, patted me on the head, and held the door open for me. Somehow, I always remember that man whenever I'm leaving the bathroom, and it's a push door. I was playing with my childhood friend at her mom's, my babysitter's, house. My friend got the idea to stand on some precarious shelves to reach this bead set in the top of the closet. We must have been around 8 years old. Once my friend reached the top of the shelf, she grabbed the bead box and she and the box fell, sending tiny little beads all across the room. My friend stood up and was okay. However, my friend's mom rushed over and looked directly at me and said, You know, whenever you're around, bad things always seem to happen. I've always been a very tame person. And that comment had no merit, but it always stuck with me nonetheless. This reminded me of the time my art teacher told me I had an attitude problem. I was the meekest kid in the entire school, but I was bad at art so maybe she thought I wasn't trying hard enough. Still me extremely anxious though. 
I was in band class and a friend with was being yelled at cause his string broke and he didn't have any spare. Now my violin case came with two extra string packets so I offered the teacher to give one to him. He turned and yelled at me to stay out of it because it's not your business is then kept yelling at him till he cried or he was already crying I don't recall, but still I could have helped I had spare string and was whiling to give it. Our family were friends and my family was well off at the moment it wouldn't have hurt anyone. Now I don't want to sound edgy or anything but that moment cemented my worldview a lot. Hole in floor didn't have a vent on it and I fell through to my armpits. Got bloody and my uncle treated it more as an I told you so moment instead of making sure I was okay. Haven't warmed up to him since. He mentioned there was a hole in the floor and later in the day I forgot and went to get a game out of the closet and immediately fell through. I was a small child. You should do the same to him next time you meet up. Lecture him about the time he left a gaping hole in the floor of the house when there was a child running around. I guess this isn't as funny or interesting, but when I was a kid we were at an all you can eat buffet called Ryan's, and my dad had gotten a plate of shrimp. For some reason, this time I had asked him if I could help peel it. I was 3 or 4 at the time. Anyways, I unsuccessfully tried peeling his shrimp, and we left. On the car ride home I remember my eyes itching really badly, but not much more. By the time we got home, my mom turned around and saw me and turned as white as a ghost. She describes it now as, my eyes being the size of soft balls. I found out I'm deathly allergic to shrimp. We went to the air. Uh, no idea what was going on at the time, and I got held down by nurses and had an EpiPen stabbed into my leg. It was so traumatizing for me that I had recurring nightmares of the doctors holding me down for years after, and became absolutely mortified of doctors, and trying new foods in general. I'm slowly getting better with the doctor thing, but I'm still super, super scared of having an allergic reaction to a food again. I don't eat anything out of my comfort zone, and always triple check ingredients. Kids in middle school used to chase me into the bathrooms while I hid crying and threw fish sticks over the stall at me, because everyone knew how badly seafood in general terrified me. TL. DR. One allergic reaction gave me crippling anxiety for the rest of my life. When I was 5, I was out on the front step with a new bottle of bubbles. A food order shows up and I help the man carry in the food. Minutes later I return, bubbles spilt, the man gone. I learned a lot about life that day. My mother doesn't understand the grudge I still carry. There was this custodian at my first elementary school. I moved around a lot as a kid, and one day while I was having trouble solving word search puzzles, he came over and taught me a trick. He told me to look for the first letter of the word I needed and look at every single letter surrounding it. If it was the same letter as the second letter in the word, then continue in that pattern. This trick has stuck with me for the past 11-12 years. Sadly, I was too young to remember his name and a couple years after we moved, he died of cancer. Thank you Mr. Custodian at Windmill Springs Elementary. Even though you will probably never read this, your kindness that day has stuck with me for a little more than a decade. As a kid my mom explained to me that you can die from not washing your hands at 4 years old. Ever since then I wash my hands before and after meals just because it's a habit. Another one is when I was 5 I learned what gum is and since then I loved it and now I can't do anything without chewing gum. I've spent too much money on gum and hand soap. I was carrying a heavy chair when I was 8 and randomly thought to myself I'm going to remember this moment. Still do. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.